my little pirates. Brooks, the fencers at Equestia. Bye, Full Metal Pony. Set address, Jamie Sissons. Um, Daddy, maybe you should watch it on the sire. A white mare with an electric blue mane costume. Maybe you also stick to your own drink. A gray earth pony spat back. She then took another chug of her drink. Normally, she stayed at home and practiced on a cello. But right now, she felt like being at the bar and blurring everything else except for her and drinks. Besides, I see you drink way more than this final. Yeah, but drinking is practically part of my job. I've got drinks to do with a lot of sire. You, on the other hoof, have had three drinks and you're already plastered. Atiyah slipped into the bar table. Her eyes dully looked at the clear glass of mug next to her. Her hoof went around the rim of the mug in circles. What's it matter? It's over anyway. File got up from her seat and wrapped her hoof around Octavia's shoulders. Hey, hey, it's not that bad. Octavia tried her horns hoof away. Yes, it is. She darted out of the bar. Some ponies took notice. Others just kept dancing and drinking. Drunken fights were nothing new to the bar. File stared off at where her friend had gone. Darn, Octavia! She then gave chase. Octavia had never liked her manager's sunglasses. They were too big. At least Miles just covered her eyes, and they didn't extend to make her face look extorted. The sunglasses gave her manager a somewhat bug appearance. After the incident with the royal wedding, Octavia liked the sunglasses even less. Octavia, great job at the concert all tonight! He said with a smile. Thank you. Octavia politely replied. She enjoyed the concert as well. She played, there been applause, everybody seemed happy. Her manager reclined back in his seat and flexed his hose back and forth, as if pointing on his own head at then Octavius. That was never a good sign. Anyway, concerts are good, but we need to man outside care a lot. Octavia White raised an eyebrow. I don't quite follow. Look, concerts and sympathies are fine, but the ponies that go there aren't getting any younger. We tapped out the Carolina crowd. Now we need to get some of the youth in on the action. His horn lit up, and a glassy latex jumpsuit flew over them. Okay, so this is step one. We give you a new image. We make you look sleek and hip. He gave Octavia a lockdown. I mean, we'll also need to work on your hair and face, but we'll manage. Oh, and new music. Definitely new music. Ativa dropped a false smile as she carried whenever she met her manager. This is crazy! Why is it toy myself and how I look is fine? She had to hope at the outfit he was still flying. That is not something a pony would ever wear while performing a concerto, an aria, or any decent piece of music. And how did you become a manager of a cello player, a cellist? If you do not know that. Her manager's shoulders slumped and he sighed. I would have thought you'd be a little more understanding, especially since you're a chair in an apartment with Paul 3. Don't bring wine on into this. Oh, I'll bring her into this. She's what I want out of you. I was actually hoping to get you two to work together, providing her manager was willing to cooperate. I tell you slammed the hoof on the ground. Never! Well, I spent finals work. She is complete opposite of me in terms of music. I won't have you jeopardize our fence just to make me into something I'm not! Manager did something he, ne he never seen him do. Took off his sunglasses and rubbed his eyes. Octavia, you gotta understand. This classical music stick is a slow job. You had to work with so many middle poets to get a gig. You know how hard it was to get your first gig performance off the ground? I do. Really? Because I would expect you to just be able to play at the big concerto hall for all the classical music fans out there. This is sounding more something like you would get if you were, say, like, Sapphire Soars or Ra Ra. He moved his hose away from his face and looked at Timmy with deep purple eyes. It was somehow worse than his sunglasses. We need you to get a new angle. You don't like what I proposed? Okay, you got a week to work things out. What do you mean, I've caught a week? A manager leaned across the table and glared at her. What do you think it means? 
when... Okay, bye! A TV kept running. So he ran past the castle, past the city, past the railway station. It's not fair! A party's not my music, right? I have fonts! So what's wrong? She was now on the grassy path that led down the mountain Canterlot rested on. The grass was a bit wilder than it was in the city. The path had seen less ponies ever since that railway had been perfected. Octavia started running and watched it stay pace down the path. She didn't care where it ended. Her eyes weren't even on the path. They were looking up at the night sky. Just play the shadow is all I know. It's my freaking kitty mock was crying out loud. It's not meant for anything but classical music. She recalled the one time she tried to play a more modern tune at the request of a pink pony at the Grand Galby Gala. The night had been a disaster. She tried something new, and all that came of it was a right celebration and winding up flat on her flank. She stopped trying and looked up in the night nice sky. What am I going to do? The sound of crickets responded. Said Pony, any pony, give me a sign! Suddenly, a star twinkled in the sky. Eh? A TV watched as a star moved and got closer. What the? As the star moved closer, it became clear it wasn't a star at all, but rather a bubble of some sort. A TV gave her a light slap in the face to make sure she wasn't dreaming. The bubble was still there. A TV could now see it kind of looked like a giant paw. Oh no, I've had another breakdown. Great. I'll probably end up like Starry Night, but you have my own ear. A TV then looked at the pursuit of hallucination again. It's still getting bigger. Okay, Blade. Don't know what the point is, but lots headed right here. Oh crap! Oh, and by the way, mismanagement, horrifying implications, being fired unfairly, but no corruption from the outside world. Octavia broke off into a gallop as the bubble careened to just where she had seen. Octavia jumped and took over for cover by a nearby rock. There was an ear splitting boom. For a second, Octavia worried that the blast would collapse the path and send her tumbling into the chasm below. But after the boom, there was only silence. Octavia slowly lifted her head above the rock and looked where the bubble had hit. There was a now paused shaped crater in the rock where the bubble had hit. It was a perfect outline, no cracks at all. It's like the bubble had simply pushed down the rock. Tavia didn't notice that the figure was in the middle of an impact. She could only see his back, but could make out it was in a suit of some kind that looked rather tattered and had some kind of black poofy mane. Tavia rushed over to the figure. She does the check on it. His coat rattled and scaled a leg clacked onto the ground. Tavia screamed and jumped back. Her skin crawled, taking in on the skeleton's decayed form. After some breath, though, she calmed down and looked at the skeleton. I don't get it. She looked at the skeleton at the eye sockets. What does it mean? I asked for a sign and it makes me even more confused. She looked over its suit. It looked like somebody, somebody in Carolot would wear if it weren't in samples. Did Octavia notice something? There was something on his hip. Curious, she moved it back into the suit and saw something that made her heart stop. And since the skeleton's hit what was a stringed instrument and a bow. Did not know? Octavia felt sick. This was a sign. A sign of things to come. I don't know, just like this poor pony. I, I... So they pressed against the back of Octavia's legs. She looked down and saw a white hook of bone touching her on her. Cold sweat dripped down her face. Her eyes, that tiny pinprick, slowly traced her way back to the skeleton's face. Its hollow eye socket stared up straight up at her. May I, may I see your panties? It asked. Octavia screamed, then fell to the ground, unconscious. It was a typical wake-up Octavia expected after the night she had. Something that should have been a new sound awoke her and brought on the migraine. <sighs> the hot cider. Octavia moaned as she stumbled out of bed. Every movement she made sent another wave of pain through her head. It was all she could do to not collapse on the way to the door. As she neared the door, the smell of something cooking filled her nose. Octavia's missed a smile. Orion is probably cooking over her hangover omelette. Celestia so blessed that man. Octavia did lost her smile. I had to move out once they fired me. I won't be able to keep up my half of the rent. Octavia took a deep breath. I said I probably apologized for last night. Octavia brought a hoof to her head as she remembered the last night's offense. She yelled at final and ran out of the bar. Did all Tartarus broke her loose? Also, I was really drunk, or maybe some points in some moon rocks in my drink. Finally, Octavia shuddered. 
but I had way too many stories of watching perfectly normal ponies go absolutely nuts when they took that stuff. Timmy opened the door and tried down the stairs. Great, I'll rehopped by listed feathers. Timmy took another deep breath. He'll fight back the worst of the headache. It was, clearly must have been the moon rocks. The bubble, the skeleton, it talking. But that's another issue. Now I just need to take care of this headache and apologize. A TV had turned the quarry into the kitchen. Final. I said some hot things and I just want to say. The skeleton was sitting at the table, sipping us some coffee. Yeah! A TV had stuck herself against the wall and began to hyperfiling. Final was over by the stove, firing out the omelet. Stop cooking for a second to give Octavia a smile. Oh, Murray Jaffe, take a seat. Breakfast will be ready in a second. Octavia began to sweat as she looked back and forth between her roommate and the skeleton at the table. Lion! Not now! You need to get me a doctor, a psychologist, and a dog could be system right now! Why? Final asked. You just got a hangover. Nothing by omelet and a bunch of water can't fix. I'm referring to the operation that's haunting me and currently sitting on a table. TV down to hover the skeleton. I need help, Vile! Oh, don't worry, Tommy! Vile replied. Aside from the whole skeleton gag, he's perfectly normal. Vile rubbed her tin on her hoof. Still not quite sure how he eats, though. At first, I TV gaped in shock. Then scowled. Face contorted. Finally, she just smiled gently. You knew that. This is a good thing. I was going to get fired anyway, and now they can just say I had him as a breakdown. No answer was like that. Me going crazy will probably be most of what I say is. TV kept smiling and pulled up a chair to the table. Okay, fine. I'm going to talk to the imaginary skeleton and indulge my loss of sanity. A TV cackled like a madman. <laughs> okay, I just need a few more minutes. Final turned back to the stove and flipped the omelet. A TV looked across the table at the skeleton. It looked back at her. Hi, crazy hallucination! How are you? Oh, hello. May I see your parties? He asked. Oh, yeah, insane. Sense, what's that? I tell you, Fred Lil. Wait, if I'm trying to communicate something to find them, parties might mean help in my head. Okay, I am going to untangle this mess at least. Um, what exactly are parties? Um, Vic, we have seen clothes in the show. We know this type of thing exists. Okay, they rarely wear clothes, but we have seen it in the show. Let's try to keep our focus here, because right now, I'm probably enjoying this chapter the most out of all of them! Well, with the exception of uh, the beginning, but this is right now probably the best ones that I've enjoyed. The cells have became scarlet and unmoving. And uh, hello. Silence. Um, are you deaf again? More silence. Octavia was about to get up and poke it when blood suddenly came out of his nose. I would ask, but this is Brooke we're talking about. Ah! Octavia fell off her chair, scrambled away from the table. She rushed up a good final for support. Final, final, its face is bleeding! Now to get help now! I can't take this for this! Whoa, 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 whoa! Final put her host on Octavia, while also keeping an eye on the omelette. Careful! I don't want burnt breakfast. She went over to Skeleton. Well, since he's some kind of napkin to clean, clean out the blood. Yeah, he did that to me too when I answered the question. Kind of freaky. Kinda? Final? The dead are eating at the table! Why in Celestia's name did you bring it back? What am I saying? It's a decision. Oh, Lena, I'm probably in a pot its head somewhere. Well, I was drugged. I felt bad for him. He didn't really want to talk about it, but I think he lost his pals. Final frowned a little. Maybe you can figure out what's eating him. I'm not talking to it anymore. In case you don't recall, I tried that and it started bleeding everywhere. I expected a bit more decorum from you, Taffy. Final joke and levitated his vessel over and tapped Octavia on the head. Now be nice and introduce yourself. He was worried about you. Octavia stealing her assault went back over the table. As she kept her eyes glued on the wood, afraid something would pop out of the skeleton skull and scare her to death. He hello. Oh, you all right now, miss? It asked. I'm not the one bleeding everywhere. Go away, evil spirit, please go away. Oh, yes, I'm sorry about that. I'm not used to such customs. 
Latinia got the horrible feeling it was bleeding again. Maybe I, I still want to thank you for helping me last night, I think. It's not a problem at all, miss. May I ask your name? Oh, Latinia. What sort of evil abomination says miss? Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Octavia. I'm drunk. Sorry if I just frightened you last night. No! Ho, ho, ho! Okay, maybe he's not bad. He seems polite. Octavia looked up just to see Brooke Fizz laughing. It's jaw looked like it was about to fall off. For an absolute terror, maybe. Octavia shivered. Is something wrong? Your skeleton. I suppose I am. Then again, you're a talking horse. It's a strange land. <sighs> Brooke took another sip of his drink. Before Octavia could say anything more, a plate with a large omelette was dropped in front of her. Final also floated a plate over to Brooke in her own seat. Alright, Ia! I know only one of us has a hangover, but I still cook a mean breakfast! Final Brooke had turned her meals, while Octavia slowly ate her own eggs. Miss Scots, these eggs are quite good. <laughs> he said with a mouthful. He let out a large belt. Burp. No problem, Book! Final thing went on, unlike like belts of her own. Pop. A TV stared at display. Some of her hardware went crooked. Lionel, did that get your monster from a few months ago skeet again? Not to my knowledge. Final stuffed a few more eggs to her mouth. Why? You're taking the undead eating breakfast with us too casually. A TV slumped. And I'm having a harder and harder time believing this is part of my own delusion. Final shrugged. Eh, I see a lot of weird things on the job. At least Brooke here isn't trying to slam his face into my records to get to the Green Fairy. Octavia opened her mouth to say something, then closed it. She thought for a second about what Final said, then decided he never comprehended. Understanding the current situation was more important. You don't question why a skeleton is talking and eating food. Octavia noticed Brooke's plate was halfway gone now. She also noticed that despite drinking coffee, there were no stains on the floor or its suit. Final eyed Brooke. Well, I've been a little curious. Oh, yes, that. Brooke started eating with those two mares. I died? No. Octavia sarcastically replied. Next you tell us you used to have less. I did that too. You're very perceptive. Octavia didn't like the way Brooke always seemed to be smiling. So, you died, but how did you come back to life? Final asked. Again, see some crazy stuff, but not a whole lot of necromancy. Then, you see, I ate a very peculiar fruit. Brooke explained, I died, but I didn't move on. Unfortunately, when I found my body, it was just a skeleton! I TV raised an eyebrow. You ate the fruit that revived you. Yes, I also can't swim. That makes everything much more clear, I TV said with a smile. I mean, can I talk for you a second? She so got up, went around the corner, and final food followed. As soon as she ran out of Brooke's sight, I TV pinned final to the wall. I want him out! Why? He's fun! Final! He's clearly a sign for me as for things to come! Why else? We have an instrument, Kitty Mark! Octavia was swaying profusely, and her eyes looked like they were about to pop out of her head. He's clearly a monster set from who knows what! Final sort of lost itself in Octavia's mouth. Final gave Octavia a piercing glare. That monster saved your life! I caught up with you right when you passed out. It kept you from falling off the mountainside. Final smile revered to her cheery self. Besides, if you have talent in music, you know I have something to talk about. Final tried back to the kids and Octavia regardsly followed. Is everything all right? Brooke asked as Final and Octavia crawled back to their seats. Great, actually, Final replied. Tommy said you had a musical cutie mark. It was curious how you got it. What's a cutie mark? Brooke asked. Final tilted her head a little. Being dead with mess with your head a bit. Final put her hoof at the musical note on her flank. This thing. Every pony has one. Oh. Huh. You know, this actually kind of raises an important question that I don't think this fic is managed to raise, but I'm going to ask anyway. I'm going to say, um, uh, are we... I think cutie marks are ingrained to the first, so, um, unless the magic decided to mess up, I don't, wait a second, we do know they're ingrained to the first, I'm pretty positive we see a pony skeleton, and I'm pretty positive I never saw a cutie mark. 
pushed it in his suit back to look at the instrument inscribed on his bones. Ooh, I was wondering about that. I always wanted a tattoo, but I don't have skin anymore. Yahoo! I think it was a little. Could, could, could you want it on the latter a little? Why not, seriously? It's Bark's carrying Mark. Anyway, how did you get it? Concert? First time playing? Pulling a really sweet gig? Brock gave her a vice there. I was supposed to say, once the given the skeletons usually did that anyway. Yahoo! I took quite fun of. I was gonna search in. Not just stuff. Death and revival, this is for memory. So he goes back up, Brock. You know, how does he realize music was his special talent? Oh, well, that's what this thing means. But to answer your question, I've always had a talent for music. Brock replied. Could you possibly sell us? Final asked. We're both of your sisters, too, and we'd love to hear some of your music. Right, Tommy? Final gave Octavia a stern glare. Um, y y yes. It's yes, I think, Octavia nervously said. Do you by chance have a violin? Brock asked, looking at Tommy. I... I have a tenor. May I borrow it? Yes, I'll go get it right now. TV bolted out of the kitchen and up to the stairs into her room. Anytime Brooke was relieved to her, she took a few deep breaths and leaned to the floor. Why in the question did I say I have my cello? Oh, it's going to cuss it! TV put her hoof on the door, but didn't push it open. Maybe. Maybe if I let it just play, it'll calm down, and it's, we can move on. She dashed to her room and carefully placed it on her back. Yes, what goes to good in some stories? I'll let you have a final song and it goes away. She drives back to the kitchen. Okay, Mr. Skeleton, let's see what you got. She held the tail over to him and gave it a bite stare again. What? Um, how do you hold it? Um, I like this. I TV assumed her playing position and played a few notes. But now I'm curious about hearing you play. It might have been a good player in life, at least. Brooke slowly reached forward and got a loose grip on both shell and a bow. Hmm, this is new for me. But I'll do my best. I'm sorry if it's a bit rough. No problem! Most girls just don't have trouble walking around! She chuckled her old joke. Very well. Brooke did begin to play. Even on the cello, the song was fun and festive. Oh, yes! Yo ho ho, yo ho ho ho, yo ho ho, yo ho ho ho, yo ho 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 ho, going to deliver big sake. What? We're stopping right there? We're only doing one lyric? No, you're not doing that to me! You do not have me play one of my favorite songs on this show and do not only give me one note! Both Octavia and Miles Mouse were practically touching the floor at the end of the song. Octavia never heard anything like it. It was nothing like the classical music she played. It was fun and lighthearted and made her feel quite happy at the end of it. Well, the final, yo ho ho, for concluding the song with a little bow. You two look like you see the ghost, but I guess that goes enough. <laughs> that was awesome! Miles raised her hope over Brooke's shoulders. You got some real scales. What do you think there, Tavi? It took an ITV a second to register what she had been asked the question. That was beautiful. I never thought a cello, my cello, could produce something like that. She bowed her head, personally insane, personally to honor Brooke. I'm sorry if I was a little unwelcome earlier, Mr. Brooke. But now you have my deepest respect as a fellow musician. Thank you, Miss Octavia. He rested his cell against the table and placed a bow on top of it. But it's just one favor I would like to ask of you now. But what? Octavia nervously taught. Oh, please don't see my soul. This is going well. There is a place I must go back to. Miss Vine. Dear no, Edward, though. By any chance, do you know where there's a body? <sighs> Excuse me one sec. I need a moment. Hey, you, over there. Well, mister, I've been walking around the studio all day. Without even looking at the screen, spell Saboni Archipelago. S A O B O D Y. Okay. <gasps> Would you say that there's an N in there? No. Would you say that an N would exist anywhere nearby? No. Care to tell this fic that? Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Huh. I think you looked at final. Which is like the show she didn't know either. She brought her attention back to Brooke. Um, is that what the afterlife is called? No, he replied. It's very important I get back there, though. 
His head drooped. To, to Itivia, it looked like Brooke was frowning. I would have to ask someone else. He turned to the door. Thank you for the hospitality. He decided to walk away. Wait! Surprisingly, it wasn't Violet that said anything. I dare you try a little closer to Brooke. I... I knew we couldn't help, but... We don't have a place to stay, and we could help you find this place. You really do that? Brooke asked. Yes, but there's more. I... I also want to know how you play like that. A TV turned away from Brooke. How could I have said that? Why am I asking the dead for help? Okay. Brooke nonchalantly replied. What the what? A TV stared at him with eyes filled with confusion. I will help you in exchange for helping me. Brooke tried to ask the closer to TV now. A TV hadn't noticed before. But Brooke must have been quite a stocky skeleton when he was alive. His head was a good half foot over a high TV zone. He looked down on her. But if you don't find the occupancy, I'll be sure to haunt you. Tiffy's eyes roll over. She unsurprisingly crashed to the ground. Oh dear. Brooke looked over at the unconscious mare. I should have said the kitty pot sooner. Yeah, don't say it, Brooke. Violet did ITV up with her magic. She also dropped her hoof over Brooke's shoulders. I think it's always been a little too high strung. I guess it comes with playing the shadow. I know that I was a dicker. <laughs> Haven't seen her do that since last year's Nightmare's Night Party. Huh, <laughs> my neck still hurts from that. The DJ cracked her neck back and forth. Then she went down on her friend, covering in a soft blue aura. She just needs a little rest. Until then, make yourself at home. Miles drive her up the stairs, while I take you floating in front of her. I'll be right back. Brooke stood alone in the kitchen. This is the most peculiar day. A stiff little lion's head flashed on Brooke's eyes. I must get back to the archipelago. Forty degrees! Fi Brooke flanged his head against the wall at an acute angle, but then slid to the ground. I promise, Luffy. I'd make it back.